I was talking to somebody this past week, uh, a guy in his prime of life, and that's, that's a general term that changes all the time in my life. Prime of life used to be a, a different era, but as I've gotten older. So you can decide what prime of life means right now. But he was in his prime of life, and he was telling me that he has to have a nightlight on in his house when he sleeps because he, he's afraid of the dark. Um, and, and we talked about this just a little bit, and you know, we just kind of chuckled about it. You know, but we all have these things in our life that <clears throat> are dark things that we're afraid of. You know, it may not be a physical darkness, but maybe some sort of emotional or spiritual thing out there that, or some weird thing that you're you're afraid of. It's just a, a darkness that you, you like the light on, whether it's a physical light or something. You want you want to be able to see what that is in your life. And again, I think if we're really honest with ourselves, we all have some sort of darkness that we're afraid of. Um, I mean, some of you might even have that, that physical darkness. I mean, I'm, I know sometimes I would go into a room that I'm very familiar with, and it's dark, and you hear just a little creak somewhere, and it's like, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's probably just the house creaking, but you know it's some man in there getting ready to kill you, right? <laughs> and that's a fear. And so... This morning, I want us to think about as we begin, what are some fears that, that you and others have in your life? Caleb? Fear of clowns. Of clowns. That is real. There's some creepy That's ones. good to know. <laughs> That's good to know. Oh, oh no. You're such a... The <laughs> bats. The bats. Failure. Failure, yeah. Go ahead and start. I know... Rejection. Last night oh, my neighbors almost burned down my garage. They were having a party and the fire. Even <laughs> the fire. The fire. The fire. Lack of protection. Fear of death. Butterflies. Yes, there are many poisonous butterflies. Spiders. What? Spiders. 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 Can we say water? Water. Now, say I slow down, make sure my writing is somewhat legible. <laughs> You're not going to forget that. Right? <laughs> no, I'll never forget that. It's on video, it's on the internet, so everybody in the world knows that. Not measuring up. Not being loved. Uh, Rejection. Measuring up. All those tied there. With inventory. Huh? Say our inventory. Uh, self. Self inventory. Mm -hmm. Unloved. Mm -hmm. Unloved. I had the love. Oh, okay, gotcha. Big crowds. Pardon me. Big crowds. Crowds. Or being alone. Yeah, I was gonna think the exact same. <laughs> thing, exact opposite. Falling. Two different fears of their um, heights. All right, and we, and we go on and on with these fears, right, in, in our life. And most of them are unwarranted. Uh, it's, it's illogical. Um, we, we fear spiders when we can just go with our hand on a spider or step on your foot. Uh, but some run away because they're going to jump on your face and kill you, right? Um, <laughs> or crawl in your ear and leg eggs. Crawl in your ear and leg eggs, yeah, something like that. <laughs> But there's some fears that, that come in that are that are very real in our life. And even if even if they're just out there, they're very real. Yeah. And they're it's overpowering sometimes in our life. Uh, we are here celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And last week we talked about just the fullness of the cross and the heaviness of that, the, the weight, the woes, and, and the wonders of the cross. Of, of what Jesus went through for us and what a wonderful thing it is for us. But I want you to think, if you would, to the time when Jesus was arrested. He, he had been telling his, his disciples, his followers, hey, this is coming. I am going to be arrested. I am going to be put to death. And I am going to be risen up back from the grave. Uh, and, and though he told that many times to them, they, they just didn't believe it. And so they came to arrest Jesus and the disciples scattered. 
They were afraid for their lives. They were afraid of being arrested themselves. They were afraid of the authorities. They were afraid of just the darkness of the world. And, and we have, in, in all of these things, sometimes it's a fear of our life, for our life. Um, not necessarily just our physical life, but, but what we have in our life. We have these fears. Sometimes we fear the darkness coming in on our, our family, the darkness coming in on our, our, our job, the darkness coming in on our health. We have these great fears that seem so heavy and so oppressive in our life. But I want to start off this morning by, by telling you about a darkness that was a horrible darkness. Uh, Jesus had been arrested. He had been uh, sent to a, a mock trial and found guilty. He then was beaten and all the things I talked about last week, and they took him to the cross. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 45, it says, From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the whole land. Um, in, in one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I, th I think it is, is Luke, Luke says, that the sun stopped shining. And, and a lot of people say, well, it must have been a, an eclipse when this went by, which makes absolutely no sense because this is the time of the Passover. Remember, Jesus gathered with the, his disciples to celebrate the Passover, and the Passover is a full moon uh, holiday. All right? And so you can't have a full moon and eclipse at the same time. Well, you can. God can do that. But that's not what it was. The weight of all our sins was placed upon Jesus at that time. The wrath of God was, was placed upon Jesus. The Father placed His wrath for our sins upon His Son at this point. And darkness was all that was left. It wasn't a darkness you'll see sometimes in, in pictures of, or, or little videos of, of storms and stuff going on. It was a darkness because there was no light. The light of God had been removed because of our sins placed upon Jesus. And so for three hours on the cross, there's a horrifying darkness of experience. But we know that it says at three o'clock, the darkness went away. And this is when Jesus said, it is finished. The wrath of God for our sins placed upon Christ was over. It was done, completed there. But it was a horrible time for these people. They had not experienced something like this before. You ever been in a cave or uh, just shut the I mean, cave is better. Go in a cave and you go so far in and you turn off your flashlight, you can't see anything. I mean, it's, it's horrifying, especially if you have any kind of claustrophobia or any other kind of those fears. It's a, it's a horrifying experience. What if my flashlight doesn't come back on? What if my matches don't work? How am I going to find my way out of here? This dark of darkness was oppressive upon Jesus. And it's a darkness that, that we fear in this. Again, not necessarily a physical darkness, but it's a darkness saying there's no light. And we're hoping for some sort of light in our life. The disciples had been scattered. They were afraid of the darkness of the authorities. They were afraid of the darkness of, that was going to affect their life here. And we are like Jesus at times. You know, during this time, at the very end of this, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because there's that separation because of our sins in our life. And sometimes when these darknesses come into our life, we, we, we think, maybe even say out loud, God, why have you forsaken me? Why is all this darkness all around me? Why, why am I experiencing these things? that other people have placed in my life, or that I've stumbled into, or just the world has, has come to this place. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Turn with me to the middle of your Bibles, to Psalm 77, please. This, uh, this the, the book of Psalms is uh, just a bunch of songs that were sung and then placed here as God's word. In Psalm 77, beginning verse 7, this is written by David, who experienced so much of this. He, uh, he experienced the oppression of other people, all kinds of things in their lives. And 
he says here in verse 7, Will the Lord reject forever and never show again, never again show favor? Has his faithful love, his mercy ceased forever? Is his promise at an end for all generations? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? I mean, I've been there. And you probably have too. And these, and these fears, however small or large it gets, we think, God, where are you? I'm all alone. These things and so many other things we didn't list have covered me. And God, you forgot me. You no longer love me. It's just over. Well, um, let me ask you a question. When you went to bed to bed last night, um, it was probably dark, right? Anybody go to bed before the sundown? No. Right. Anybody wanted to? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But when you went to bed, it was dark outside, and did you did you lie down in bed and go, oh, I sure hope that sun comes up tomorrow. I don't know. No, we, we know. And we, we've seen this pattern of God's faithfulness that the sun, even if it's a cloudy day, the sun will come up. Light will be coming in. And this is what is, is going on with David here. He understands there's darkness all around. And he, in his life right now, his experience is, God, you have forsaken me. But let's look at verses 11 through 14. It says, I will remember the Lord's works. Yes, I will remember your ancient wonders. I will reflect on all you have done and meditate on your actions. God, your way is holy. What God is great like God? You are the God who works wonders. You revealed your strength among your peoples. In other words, it's coming back to a remembrance that God is light, that God's light overpowers, overcomes darkness, that God is true, and these are false. We must remember what God has done. And so now we're going to get back to the resurrection story. So it'll turn me to, to Luke, Luke chapter 24. This is now after Jesus had been crucified. He died. The veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. The, the Holy of Holies was now open to all who will come. The presence of God. Luke chapter 24. And beginning to verse 9. Oh, excuse me, verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, by the way, this is why we traditionally have sunrise services, all right, because of this experience here. They, and there's three ladies, some maybe more, went they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in, but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead, asked the men. He is not here, but he has been resurrected. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful man, be crucified, and rise on the third day? And they remembered his words. They went to the tomb in darkness. They went to the tomb expecting darkness to continue. They didn't believe God at his word. They didn't believe Jesus when he said, I'm going to be crucified and be risen up from the grave. They took spices to, to anoint the dead body of Jesus. That was their whole purpose. We find in other passages, it talks about, well, how are we going to roll the stone away? We're just, boy, we didn't think this through, did we? But God rolled the stone away, not to let Jesus out, but to let us in, to see that the tomb was empty. To let us see that, hey, darkness does not overcome light, but light always overcomes darkness. Always. But here, the angel says to these ladies, didn't he tell you this? And they remembered. They remembered. 
that Jesus said, I'm going to be resurrected. Matter of fact, on the third day, I'm going to be resurrected. It wasn't just some sort of vague thing. Jesus told them the complete plan. Remember. But we remember the darkness. But we don't remember the light of Christ. Let's continue on in this passage. Verse 9. Get to the right chapter. So returning from the tomb... They reported all of these things to the eleven. So these are the apostles. These are these holy strong guys that scattered when Jesus was, was arrested. But now they're back together. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women with them telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them. And they did not believe the women. All right. It seemed like nonsense to them. Well, weren't the apostles told the same thing? That Jesus said to them, I am going to be alive. But their thinking is, oh, these silly women. They're just emotional. But we, you know, we put those same excuses on, on what God has told us. We, we put the same thing on, on the darkness in our life when we know the scripture and we go, that's just nonsense because my situation is different. It was nonsense to them. And if we are living in darkness and some of these great fears that hinder us and hold us down, sometimes people even tell us, hey, remember this? And you know, oh, it's just nonsense. Instead of taking God at his word. Well, the next verse, verse, verse 12 Peter, however, and I love that, however. I mean, Peter was among the eleven, and he was going, ah, I don't think so. But then he thought about it. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. And we find out in other passages that John, the Apostle John, also went. And when he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen cloths. So he went home amazed at what had happened. He went home amazed. Wow. What God said is really true. What God said is really true. And we live in fear sometimes that is so restricting to us, so overpowering to us. And we're just like these apostles who are huddled up in, in places and, and, and so afraid we find out in their passages, they lock the doors because they're afraid of the people. They don't want to go out and do what God had told them to do. They don't want to believe him at his truth. They just huddle down and live in fear instead of living here in the light. I mean, Peter goes home and he's amazed. When's the last time you were really amazed at what God has done in your own life? I mean, you were amazed at what he did. Now, I remember back in, you know, 1945, that was a cool time. Yeah, that's the only amazing time that's ever, God's been in your life. I mean, God should be amazing to us every day because we serve a risen Savior. We should think about this Easter story every morning and think, you know what? I mean, Jesus is alive. And if he is alive... He died for me. He is alive for me. And so I must live in his joy. Well, my favorite passage of scripture, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, and I went ahead through 24. I usually just do 23 and 20, I mean, 22 and 23. The 24 is also just amazing. Tell you what, let's all read this together, all right? Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in him. They are new, how often? Every morning. So we have no excuse. We have no excuse when we go to bed thinking about the darkness that's on us and darkness about tomorrow. We have no excuse when we say, God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
We have no excuse because God in His Word, and that's why we need to remember this, has said, I'm God. My faithful love, my mercies, my compassions are there always. As a matter of fact, it's new. And this word new here is not something new, but it's new in freshness every day. It's not some sort of new discovery, but when it's fresh, it's amazing. You ever eaten an old piece of cake? I'll still eat it, you know. It's cake. <laughs> you know. But then when you have a, a fresh piece of cake that has just been baked and iced and it's moist and just, you know, you're like, hmm, this is just amazing. Because it's new, it's that freshness that's in our life. And when we seek God, we seek the risen Savior. It's fresh. When these women went to the tomb expecting darkness, and all of a sudden these angels say to them, I'm alive. Matter of fact, we find out that Jesus appears to someone. He says, I'm alive. The disciples, that's ah, nonsense. But eventually they came around, remembering what Jesus said. They said, hey man, he is alive. And that should change your life. It did change their life. And when we, when we say, God, today you have new mercies for me. You may have some of these same situations going on. But the darkness is less and the light is more. Because you're going, God, you are God. You have not forsaken me. You have not forgotten me. The sun came up this morning. That means your mercies are new today. They're new pretty much every moment. And that last verse says, the Lord is my portion. He is, he is my all. Therefore, I will put my what in him? Hope. hope. Now again, the biblical hope here, what we, what we typically do is use the word hope when we should use the word wish. You know, I hope I get a new car for my birthday. That's just a wish. When, when you look at hope, and that's why I like our name, New Hope, hope in the scriptures is that expectation with, I mean, excuse me, a, a desire with an expected outcome. I can, I can wish all I want for a new car on my birthday. You know, July, July 19th. <laughs> Not in case you're thinking about it. <laughs> you know, I can have all that, that wishing, but I, I'm not expecting it. But when I put my trust in Him, when I put my hope in Him, that's expected. Because He is God. He is faithful. His mercies are new every morning. And when I remember His Word, and when I, when I remember what He has done in my life, God, You brought me out of this fear, out of this darkness into Your light. And God, if You've done that before, You're going to do it again today. I mean, sometimes those nights of darkness are long. But we continue to trust in Him. Put our hope in Him. You know, it's amazing. I've read through the Bible many times. And I love how God will bring a scripture in, into your life. You go, well, I didn't know that was there. And this is one of those scriptures, this next one. And so, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10. It's, it says, Let him who walks in darkness and has no light... Trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Yes, I don't know. I mean, we all come here with shining faces. We all come here with some masks that we have on. But we probably all come here with a little bit of darkness we have in our life. And God says, hey, if you're in this darkness, however big, I don't know, you're in it. It says right here, Trust in the name of the Lord. Rely upon God. Because when I start trusting in man, when I start trusting and relying on God, I mean man in this world, whether it's a government, whether it's a job, whether it's a friendship, those sometimes and usually fail. But when I trust and rely upon God, knowing His goodness, knowing His mercies, knowing that they're new and, and fresh every day, that trust is never broken. Now sometimes in this trust, sometimes in this hope, I realize that what I was wishing for was not what I needed. And what I was hoping for is what I got. 
Because sometimes I wish for things that God says, no, 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 no. You know, your kids, when you're growing, you know, your kids at 16, you know, they want a new car. Not happening, okay? You can wish all you want. You can ask all you want. But I will supply with you with things and tools to, and, and opportunities for you to get to that point. And so this remembering that Jesus, if the angels told the, uh, the ladies, the angels, and then the ladies told the apostles, and even Jesus told his apostles, his followers later on, it says, remember these things. We are here to remember. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. This is what God has done for us. He has rescued us. Rescued us. We were trapped. We were enslaved. He has rescued us from the domain, the whole kingdom of darkness. And he has transferred us out of that darkness into the kingdom of the son he loves. We have redemption. Redemption. The forgiveness of sins in him. That's what we have. And if, if you wake up in the morning and say, God, I don't see these mercies. I, I don't see this compassion you have. And you're not thinking very hard. So all you got to do is think, okay, what did I do yesterday? What did I think that was against you, God? What did I, I say that was against you, do that was against you? And all of a sudden, you got to go back to the cross. Go back to the resurrection. Go back to this truth of this verse. I have forgiveness in you. And that's fresh. The fresh cleansing from the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and when you confess those things to God, you really experience that. I mean, the wrath of God for our sins was placed upon Christ at the cross. That's over. That's why it is finished. But sometimes we still sin. Not sometimes. When we still sin, we put a kind of a, a barrier in that fellowship we have with God. And we need that removed. And that's where some of these fears come from. Some of these fears come from our choices of sin. Not all of them, but some of them do. And so we have got to say in our life, okay, God, I need to remember. 2,000 years ago, ladies went to the tomb expecting darkness. But you showed them light. 2,000 years ago, these followers of you that... You told them the truth. They didn't believe the truth. Lived in the darkness. Lived in fear. All of a sudden were out there bold because the light of Christ came into them. I see it throughout the scriptures and I've seen it in my own life, God. And so we remember back in our own life of what God has done for us. Where he's brought us out of the darkness. Especially in things like this. And that will bring you a joy. And he'll give you new mercy. New mer Mm -hmm. new mercies as you look for them. I mean, they're there anyway. But when you see them, that's huge. I mean, some of these fears, some of the irrational fears that I used to have were still are gone. Sometimes they attack. You know, sometimes claustrophobia will get a hold of me at times and say, look at that stupid. You know, that's irrational. God, you are God. And so we Go to here and say, God, I want to remember what you've done for me. And it's not just once a year, a time we call Easter. And that's the greatness. God says, I want to remove that darkness. I want to transfer you out of that darkness where you are right now. Transfer you out of that fear. But all these scriptures that put your trust in him, put your hope in him, follow him, and he'll do that. And so let me challenge you. To honestly, not on this board, but honestly look at your life and see where fear is paralyzing you. And even ask other people, say, I need some help with this. I need help with these fears, with this darkness in my life. Because some of the darkness we have is that choice of sin, and we're dragging ourselves down into darkness. But God is God. Jesus Christ rose from the grave after being dead. He has given each one of us who are followers of him new life because we were dead in sins. So if you're here without him, you are in darkness no matter what you think. And so you have to trust in him, trust in Christ, what he has done upon the cross. 
Say, I am following you. I can't do it on my own. I can't do anything about my sin. But Jesus, you did upon the cross. And you proved it was worthy because you raised up from the grave. And us who are followers of Christ sometimes go back to those dark times. The darkness. And we have to say, okay, God, I must remember. I must remember what you've done. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your great love. And, uh, God, we really don't understand what the darkness truly was in our own life because of our sin. But you did, and that's why you sent Jesus to die for us. To get us out of that domain, that kingdom of darkness, and transform us. Transfer us into the light of your Son, Jesus. So, Father, I pray uh, for each one here, whatever darkness that we're experiencing, that we would be amazed like Peter once we truly look and say, man, you've got light, God, thank you. We'd be amazed and it would change our life to go help other people who are in darkness. That we'd be telling people about the resurrected Christ who loves us and loves them. But thank you so much for that Easter morning when what seemed like so much dark was the brightest light ever. So Father, I pray that we would love you more, follow you more, each moment of our life, each day, step by step. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.